Okay, this is gonna be my first ever recording of a game of StarCraft. Now, <laughs> I feel kind of weird doing this because I watch this stuff all the time. But I watch really fun people like Husky or HD or Day9 do it. I'm kind of lame and I don't have that many jokes. Um, my opponent's gonna be Shahrazad. Shahrazad. Uh, let me unpause this. My opponent's gonna be Shahrazad the Zerg on the top right. And I'm gonna be the Protoss pieces always nice in the in the bottom left. Um, I always say good luck, have fun. People say that if you don't say it, it's because you're gonna cheese or do something ridiculous. Even when I cheese, I still say it because you know what? He needs the luck. And uh, I'm definitely gonna have fun. But yeah, uh, this is something I always do typically. Let me actually slow down the game. Um, I always build my pylon at around 8 supply and then send that worker out to scout because uh, I find it very important, especially against either Zerg or Terran because they're the ones who tend to cheese the most. How many times did I lose against a 6 pool? A lot of times. Why? Because I never scouted because I suck. Um, as you can see, I have it queued up to do a ring around the rosies, and of course I'm multitasking back at home. Let's check out the production. I'm always producing uh, probes, always constantly, and once my money gets high enough, you'll see me build my gateway, see? So, the important thing to do, and this is something I learned from day 9, is keep your money low, keep, don't get supply blocked, and um, you should be okay. Now, this is going to be an, actually a pretty funny game in my opinion. Of course, he's scouting me too, I think. Actually, no, he has not sent a scouting worker, has he? No, he has not. Uh, my gateway is nearly done, as you can see on the production tab. So is his spawning pool, though. So I'm not really going to be aggressive with my zealot or with whatever I pop out of there. I, I don't remember exactly what I did. Um, but I, I do like to get that at a good time, at around 14 supply, the, the gateway because it gives my economy a chance to you know stay up and active and um, of course I know the spawning pool for an average Zerg goes down around 14 so we'll we'll have our units out at about the same time and one zealot can take down four or six Zerglings if, you're, if you micro it well now of course I suck and my APM is probably really low we're gonna look at that to embarrass myself I am currently doing 20 things or while well, it's shooting up. Well, you know, I'm in the Silver League, I guess. I can't really complain too much about that. I'm mostly just concerning myself with, you know, trying to get up into the higher league, but learning how to play and how to do strategies. Now he's going for um, gateway, I mean, uh, spawning pool and extractor, which tells me that he's going to try to get roaches out because he's going to need that gas. It's either zergling speed or roaches, and since he hasn't put anybody on the gas yet. I can tell that he's actually not that good with his uh, his multitasking. He's too concerned with um, killing my probe. His queen is pooping out a creep turmoil instead of throwing down uh, spawn larva. So he's not going to have that many units on the field. So that gives me the, the go ahead to say, you know what? I don't need to really pop out that many things out of my gateway. Of course, I do see this overlord parked at my front door. And so I decide I'm going to get a stalker, take it out, hopefully supply block my opponent, which, yeah, that might actually supply block him. It'll bring him down to 18. And um, I decided not, usually I throw down a robo bay here when I see that they're going for roaches. But I decided not to do that because his overlord was just parking right there. So I'll probably throw that down after my three gates. I usually like to go for the first two gates then the robo and then the third gate but in this game I think I actually flipped it backwards and um, of course my stalker going the exact wrong way that it's supposed to go it should be taking out this thing but of course I suck and we all know that um, he's already got some zerglings not enough to really do anything I'm gonna send out another scout because I want to see if he already has roaches or if he decided to go for a for a hatchery because I don't think I actually scouted that hatch yet. If we look at my camera view, um, I didn't actually scout the hatch and I didn't scout much up here. I know this was going down, which this is probably a roach warrant. Yes. 
I did see that. And now I do see the, the creep right here, which tells me there's definitely a hatch here. I didn't see the spine crawlers, I don't think. Oh, I did see. Wow, I saw everything, I guess. My opponent, on the other hand, is a little bit in the dark because he just sees the one gateway, or the two gateways, and the cyber core. He didn't even see the cyber core making or being chrono boosted. So if we can see here, my robo is almost done. And I know he's getting roaches, of course, being supply blocked. So he just turned out three overlords at the same time. That's always key when you look at the production and you see that someone's pooping out three overlords at once that they were supply blocked. Now, I know he went for an expansion. And I know the way he did it was kind of lame because he first went for roaches and zerglings and uh, double gas and um, then the expansion which tells me he's not gonna have that good of an economy he's not gonna have that many roaches either so I can hopefully have time to get the nexus up but more importantly wall myself off a little bit here and use the sentry to buy myself time for a couple of cycles of warping in and to get my immortal out in case he decides to push of course I don't know if he's gonna push in the game now another thing that I see that he could improve on, um, Overlord spreading. He saw one stalker, but he didn't see a lot more than that. Um, if I were a Zerg, I would usually plop my Overlords all around the base, all around here, as you can see um, on the minimap, all around my base. Because I'd want to see if he's sending out, you know, a warp prism. If, if I'm going up here with a warp prism or you know, some blink stalkers are popping out. I want to see all that. Even if it costs me an overlord or two, I want to see that. If, if, he's dis if I decided to go Phoenix and he had all his overlords here, yeah, I, I could kill some of them, but he would know exactly, hey, this guy's going warp gate. I should prepare for anti-air. So I'm getting a fourth um, gateway down because, as you all know, Really on one base you can afford to produce off of three gateways and a robo if you're really good. And if, if you're really really good and you get out uh, another base then you can add on two more gateways and another robo or something else. Now what I decide to do because of course always sending in an observer, you need that. You always need that. I mean how many times have I beaten people because they didn't have observers and they yell at me and go DT. Ah. Or, or you know something like that another nice thing I'm trying to do is wall myself off here now a lot of Protosses what they'll do is they'll actually fully wall this off they'll put another forge and gateway and a couple pylons and cannons close that off completely open this open this back door rocks and make it their front door and just walk out of here and in retrospect I think that would have been better and probably more efficient um, but I didn't do that and it ended up costing me a little bit later I think what I decided to try to do was wall off partially in case he breaks it down and tries to come in his concave won't be as good as mine right Protoss need a lot of concave to to um, effectively kill the enemy units whereas Zergs don't really need that much well they do but a lot of Zerg units need to surround. So it's going to be tougher for the Zerg to break it down if it's partially walled off. However, most Protosses are much smarter than me when they play. And they'll fully wall this off and open their, their back door and make it their front door. Now notice, um, notice he's getting the Glial Reconstitution, which is the uh, Roach Speed and the Roach Burrow. So that the Roaches, these little critters right here, they can burrow and move burrowed and do all that good stuff. Um, of course, I know that he's getting that. Well, I'll see it in a little bit um, with my over, with my observer. But the important thing that I didn't see, I didn't see that he had taken any of this out. If we look here, look, he's planting down another hatchery. He's actually going for three bases because he knows, like any good Zerg, a two base Protoss against a two base Zerg. Protoss has much stronger units. You need to get another base up. So he's going to try to do that. The only problem is I have 45 workers to his 37. Any good Zerg 
knows when they're in danger of being attacked. And my friend here, he's not my friend for reals. So look at this guy, he's not even working. He's just chilling. He's the manager, he's supervising. She's got a little bit of extra energy, which means that he isn't on time with his spawn larva. As you can see, yeah, it can take him a little bit. So, his saturation here, he doesn't have that many workers. And here, look at this, he barely has one per patch. Whereas me, I have two bases. And I have um, two, you know, fully saturated here and fully saturated here. Now, something else that I'm going to do is, as you can see here, let's bring up the production tab. I decide to go for a warp prism and try to harass my opponent and see what happens. Uh, warp prisms, of course, can transport units as well as go into phasing mode. Transforming a warp prism into a phasing mode will essentially create a warp field, like a pylon, and you can bring in units anywhere at any time. Of course, he spots it with his overlords, which are barely now being spread. At the same time, I am going for uh, Colossus because I know he's going for roaches. I see it. You know, I see these roaches with my, with my observer. Um, and I know I can afford to go for Colossus and hopefully outrange the roaches and use the range of the Colossus to my advantage. Now, he brings his queen to fight. This is probably a bad idea most of the time. Yeah, you want to take this out. The queen should be focused firing down. And I threw away $300, $400 right there, because each zealot is $100, 100 minerals. Uh, not good. Of course, you can still see my warp prism because he has his overlords there. Now, another smart thing that you would have to spread him out a little bit to have complete vision. Of course, his creep spread has been phenomenal. If you look at the minimap, he's got creep everywhere. This base has been up, but not mining. Again, that's his, his folly because... He's not, he's not uh, producing enough drones. If you look, I'm still producing probes this whole time. He's working up the Hydra list, but his money's starting to stack up really high. And um, he's not really spending it. If we look at the resources tab, my money's starting to stack. I'm at about, I'm sitting on a thousand minerals, 150 gas. He's sitting a little bit higher than me with a little bit more gas. Um, I do decide to go for another Zealot Harass and hopefully get something out of it. Let's see what happens here. Yeah, um, the thing I always try to do is pick off the queen because that cuts the production of larva, which cuts the production of units, and then go straight for the drones. Now you may say, why would you go for drones when, you know, they're not as vital a unit as a roach? Well, the thing is, each larva can either produce a drone or a unit. So for each drone I kill, that's one less unit that you can make. Now, I also saw one other thing. He's got a layer, but I didn't see any observers. There's no observer following my warp prism. My observer's been alive forever. I'm actually right now checking for hidden bases. Did I even see the third one? I did eventually see the third one. So I decided to do some DT harass because he doesn't really have anti-air. Even though, um, on the production, I could have sworn I saw a spire. But I guess not. He does have a hydralis den, so he does have anti-air. He doesn't really have Hydras, his whole arm is just sitting. So I'm gonna go for Dark Templar at the same time getting my Colossus. And another good thing to always do is mix in a couple of Dark Templar with your army. Because um, the better you can do that, chances are they won't bring in their Overseer with their army when they attack. Which gives you the upper hand because you can, you can really, really harass them. Now, the reason I have two old, uh, observers is because the recent patch lowered the cost of observers, and that is so good because literally they're like map hands. So I'm gonna have a couple of observers, and my war prism is gonna make its way around the map all the way down here. And I want to kill this thing as quickly as possible. If this can get up and running, then we're gonna have some problems because he's gonna zoom ahead of me. Another problem that he's having is he still doesn't have a lot of work. This guy is still not mining for something. I'm running low on minerals, desperately. So I know I gotta make something happen. I gotta, I gotta make an edge for myself in this game. I do have a massive army, and in retrospect, I should have moved out a little bit sooner. 
maybe gotten more sentries and less stalkers because the sentries with force fields would really help the Colossus keep the roaches back and outrange them and whittle them away. So, what's going on here? Where'd my, uh, where'd my thing go? Am I waiting? I guess I'm waiting. Uh, let's look at the APM tab. Of course, my APM is really low, lower than his. I'm producing two uh, Colossus at a time because I got my six gateways. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And then two Robo, which is typical. That's usually what I do. Or I like to go for one Robo, one Stargate. If I'm feeling frisky. I definitely wouldn't transition into Templar at this point, High Templar, because it would be too much of a cost investment too late into the game, and my minerals are running low, and I am oversaturated everywhere. Um, I should have probably stopped producing drones as well. So here it begins. I'm going to warp in a ton of Dark Templar, and the key to, the key to what you want to do is not that. Um, yeah, Zergs need their gas, but what you really want to do is split them up and send them to different places to a different spot. This will really help you because he has probably one observe, uh, one overseer as a detector. So he'll only be able to see one at a time. So the ones that move up, they're the ones that get to do the damage. So he's going to have a tough time dealing with that. And at the same time, I'm moving my warp prism around because I want to continue working in a different places. So this is a very APM intensive thing. Of course, my APM is 12. We all know I, I don't actually use I don't use the keyboard I just think about something that happens like that. I'm just thinking about that right now and it's boom it's gonna happen. Always wanted to work in different locations all the time. Uh, the reason for this is like I said to keep his uh, let's look at the units tab. To keep his uh, overseers spread out, he only has one. He should have made more. He's probably sitting on a bank of money. Yes he is. Notice I'm going for these spine crawlers because they can't attack me. And over here I have a DT. I'm gonna start going up here and chopping at that. Over there he was able to take it out because he has his overseer parked right here. But down here, there's no more mining going on. Suddenly his income is plummeting because on top of the fact that he doesn't have a lot of workers, they're not even mining. Some of them, look at this, I took out a ton of workers right here. And right here, slice. Dark Templar do so much damage, especially with plus one upgrade, 50 damage. Uh, yeah, my upgrades are one and one. Let's check his. He's got one and zero. Not that good. Not that good. So I decide. <coughs> excuse me. At this point, I decide he's distracted. He's trying to deal with these Dark Templar. Um, you know, he's gonna have his army start spreading out a little bit to try to deal with them. His income, 12 harvesters, 80 minerals per minute. He's not going to be able to keep up with my macro, even though I'm really on one base because at this point I am completely mined out and this is starting to get run dry. I decide I'm going to push out, try to position my Colossus in the back against the cliff. Um, should have kept these immortals a little bit more spread and maybe turned my army uh, to face north. Now, another bad thing that he does is the pathing in Star Trek 2 is really, really complicated. So, if you just tell your army to move somewhere, you know, some of them might go one way, some of them might go another way. So you really have to be careful about stray units. Notice his concave is nice, but the roaches can't range against the Colossus in the back. So even though they're hitting this one, they're being burned up. These Colossus do 17 damage times 2 and have a range of 9, whereas a roach has a range of so I decide I'm going to keep doing that and notice at the same time still continuing to warp in Dark Templar, still continuing to harass everyone because he's got to keep doing it. He's got to keep producing it. And suddenly his resources are starting to plummet. And now he has no money, no work, except for that one lazy guy who survived from the Um He's got no production and another key take out some structures that you know might hurt you. For example, in retrospect, I win the game right here. He doesn't even GG, he gets, he gets pissed at me. 
doesn't GG. In retrospect, what I should have done with the Dark Templar, once I had killed all the probes, is go for the spawning tree. As soon as this is done, he can't produce any units anymore. And that would have been so good. Um, it would have kept his numbers down. Of course, looking at what he could have done better, um, spread your overlords. I mean, you got three here. You have... Uh, I saw a bunch. Look at this. They're all just sitting here. Spread them around the map. You are, you, his creep spread, um, what was this guy's name? Shah Razad. One day I will pronounce that correctly. His creep spread was amazing. Um, get one or two overseers, especially if you've seen a Dark Templar, you want to get more. You know, for each base, I would recommend one overseer. You can afford it if you're keeping each base. Um, and definitely, he only had three hatches. Um, and he was on three base, I would have plopped down a fourth hatchery and kept injecting larva and tried to do what day 9 cost a 300 food push. He was too slow to build his army. His army tab went down dramatically. But if we actually, uh, let me raise this a second. Look back. Um, let's see. So his army was uh, pretty high at this point, higher than mine. But he kept it back. He should have pushed. He should have attempted something. My back door was pretty exposed to the cannon and the B pylon powering that cannon. He could have done something. I mean, I think he was a bit too passive, and for being very macro oriented, he didn't have enough drones. I mean, a Protoss can produce uh, workers pretty fast, but Zerg can produce workers faster. And his drone count was always lower than mine this whole game. So we're actually going to quit this and. I don't know if it'll let me check his stats. I don't think so. No, it just brings me back here. So that's it, guys. This is my first cast. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll have another funny game pretty soon, I think. Thank you all for watching. Bye.